Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here at Google Next. We're at day three of our wall-to-wall -wall three days of coverage. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE, joined with Savannah Peterson, Rebecca Knight, Rob Strecce, breaking down all the action. As, as usual, CUBE, our flagship program, go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. Day three, we got the analyst angles segments and a lot of great innovators coming on. As we look back on the first two days of the show, pretty much all the big announcements are out there. We got Sanjeev Mohan here, the principal owner and CEO of Sanjmo, um, great analyst, deep in data, deep in cloud, deep in data, former legendary Gartner analyst and now <laughs> your successful you. firm and member of the Cube Collective. Great to always Absolutely. have you on the Cube. Good Thank friend. You so much. And uh, love your work. Your research is phenomenal. Um, you always got your finger on the pulse and getting more data. So I got to ask you, well first of all, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much, always a pleasure <laughs> to be here. Um, so this is data show and hiding in plain sight with a cloud show. Yeah. I mean, everything about AI is about data. This has been a great move for Google Next. Now remember, eight months ago they had the yeah. other Google Next, Correct. so it hasn't even been a year. Yeah. So we know Google's been working really hard, but I was kind of like, not skeptical, but curious of how it would play out following on so fast because one, eight months is not a short time for pulling content together, building yeah. product, but the market was changing so fast. Mm -hmm. So what's your take of the show? What do you think of what's happened? How would you look at this? Give us an update on how you see how things played out. What's the coolest thing? Give us your take. So John, last year when we were at this event, I, I wrote a blog on, uh, and I created this seven layer OSI stack and I basically mentioned how Google has a full stack and it's one of the very few companies that does from all the way hardware to applications at scale. This year, that story came together. We actually, so I strongly feel that Google Cloud has thrown the gauntlet and I, I know, uh, I'm hearing that a lot of other competitors are having sleepless nights because what, uh, what Google has done is they brought, uh, so the entire stack is AI infused. And I don't want to over index on AI, Gen AI, everything is about AI, but because now they own their own multi-model foundation model, mm -hmm. so it is so deeply integrated, they can handle text, they can handle audio, they can handle video, all in real time. And we saw a lot of demonstration of that, mm -hmm. and now they have uh, a whole uh, build process for agents. So uh, right from their own TPUs, their own new yeah. chip that they announced, all the way up to agents, they have a unified stack. I think that's a great point, and it's very nuanced. I'm glad you brought that up because what's not obvious in some of the coverage and the other analysts out there uh, and the news is that they're covering all the sexy announcements. Oh, the new processor, which yeah. by the way, is big news, custom silicon. Correct. They, you got to have that, yeah. and we had them on theCUBE. But yeah. the big query with vector embeds, yeah. with the multimodal, and the fact that it connects to other data sources and other clouds yeah. is a huge game changer because Google's basically saying, hey, it's a multi-cloud world, it's mm -hmm. a super cloud world, we'll connect, but we think if you, it'll end up in BigQuery yeah. anyway because we'll have the better product, right. which is unique. So now you've got a product that takes away all that complexity. Right. So having BigQuery, having all that in one place, yeah is new for Google, and it's a game changer if they can pull it off. Uh, now again, a lot of stuff's in public preview. Correct. So we have to still see the meat come on yeah. the bone, so to speak, but right. directionally, so, powerful. So let me, let me ask you a question. Uh, you've had a number of speakers come here. Yeah. Has anyone mentioned BigQuery Omni? No. 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 I, I, I was expecting that answer. They did they, not. Because it's not AI, and no one wants to talk about it. You know what they announced in BigQuery Omni? that did not even make the headlines, that you can have, uh, BigQuery Omni lets you run BigQuery not just in Google Cloud, but in other cloud providers. They announced a cross-cloud materialized view, so you can query Big, uh, BigQuery on AWS uh, much faster and cheaper. So this cross-cloud uh, uh, materialized view is, is a big deal. But in all this noise about AI, no one even talked about it. Well, they did. We, we did talk about the BigQuery fine tuning with Vertex. That was cool. Yes. So, and that is actually. Uh, so, uh, okay. So, let's talk about that. Yeah. So, this is how BigQuery is developing. First of all, uh, I, I'm a huge believer in uh, having a unified architecture for streaming and batch. 
because we are moving to streaming, we want to be able to run intelligence yeah. on the real-time data via stale data. So, so now what uh, the way BigQuery works is, let's say uh, a new uh, document is loaded, that document gets into their uh, cloud storage, uh, BigQuery gets notified, immediately it starts vector embedding it, I can run my, my vector search. So a lot of companies have it, but if an audio file gets uploaded, I can transcribe it in real time, I can store the transcription in yeah. BigQuery, embed it, and I can do vector search. The vector search is a huge deal for multiple reasons. One, it makes BigQuery much stronger solution yeah. because it's got Correct. unstructured data and, Correct. and you get the retrieval. It right. makes search available, yes. which is going to game change. And combined with yeah. the taking in other documents and reasoning them, yeah. it's going to be a huge game changer in jest, forms, procurement. I mean, every vertical yeah. will be impacted. So there's going to be some goodness there. Yeah. But also, there's an industry perspective, Sanjeev. And remember, we said on theCUBE, I think it might have been last year at MongoDB Local in New York that this whole vector thing is really powerful, but it's not, a, it's not a company, it's a feature. And I think Google's, again, another company that's got vector, it's, not a, it's a feature of something bigger with BigQuery, and exactly. so other, Mongo has vector search. That's correct. So vector search is not a company, it's a feature. Yes, correct. And so here you go, well, again, another checkbox, BigQuery with right. Vector, Correct. I can run it there. Yes, but here, there's a difference in what uh, Google is doing. It is not just vector search. If it was just vector search, it'd be fine. So uh, the story I was telling about documents come in, audio comes in, now a video comes in. Yeah. So you can start tagging that video and embedding it. Let's say it's an insurance company yeah. that wants to look at not just claims, uh, but they also want to look at the video. Yeah. But in the video, there's a license plate. The license plate should not be visible yeah. to the general public, so you can you can obfuscate that. Yeah. So you so need computer vision. Yeah, you need to have yes. multimodal. Correct. So this vision API. So it's no longer just about search. You can take that data that you brought in, embedded it, and you can fine tune a model. You can train a new yeah. model. So no, no. This is a good yeah. point. Let's let's expand on this. Yeah. I think this is a great point you're bringing up. So what you're saying is, and this is really I want to put it on the table. It's not just search. Yeah. Bring it in, Correct. do some retrieval, augmentation Correct. generation, yeah. which is unstructured data. Right. It's multimodal, meaning you yes. are, it, you're creating the ability to address data yep. Correct. so that at runtime, when you're generating answers or reasoning, yeah. you can do it. Right. So that's, it's not just text. Right. You have to look at all the things. So for example, I'll give you another example. Multimodal, we were talking about um, some of the biometric stuff, I mean, and biology stuff around mm -hmm. healthcare and health sciences. Mm -hmm. And DNA is just stored. That's a mode, modal yeah. too. DNA right. is multimodal. Correct. It's not text. Correct. So it's multimodal, multimodal is a really important yes. concept because yes. a license plate in a form Correct. is an image. Right. A video has right. audio. So this is just all about making right. it automated. So see, uh, let's talk about uh, DNA. This is all, I'm just literally thinking uh, on my feet here. You know, CRISPR has been such an amazing, technology yeah. lets you do gene editing, and now you can simulate, you can try to find cure for cancer and Alzheimer and all that. What if all that information is hiding in plain sight in 20 million documents from New England uh, Journal of Medicine, CDC, WHO, with, with generative AI, I can now find these relations, these semantic search that are similarity, like distance close to each other, right? Yeah. So, so this is where I see Gen AI having the biggest impact. Not summarization, great. Not call center yeah. automation, IVR. Yeah, easy stuff. That's yeah, but in finding what is in my 20 million, 40 years of unstructured data and then uh, finding new cures and... Yeah, and so that brings up the whole context window. Um, yeah. you know, Gemini 1.5's got one million yes. tokens. Correct. Okay, at, remember Jensen at NVIDIA, and again, yeah. good point about Jensen not being here. There's no yes. Jensen here, right? So, so, so we, yeah, yeah, I was telling you <laughs> that before. Uh, we, we didn't talk about that. See, I, I think this is a, uh, if you look back, Every conference you and I went to, there was obligatory presence by Jensen, by CEOs of other companies. Who came to this conference? 
Nobody. They, we had videos of uh, Uber CEO and customers, but they didn't come on the stage. And this is the power of Google. What Google is saying is that we are giving you the whole package, simplified, unified, but we'll give you optionality. You can go to Model Garden, you can get an open source model, you can get Apache Iceberg, so you can keep your data on, on just a bud. We don't need NVIDIA to be successful, we don't even need OpenAI to be successful. So at your point, again, yeah. so, so your summary of the show is, Google put together the package. Yes. All in the stack. Correct. Bottom to top. Correct. With data infused throughout. Yes. And where AI will be introduced and scaled. Yep. And then you get the Kubernetes container piece yep. to orchestrate it together. Correct, correct. And that's now a yep. full workable package for an yes. enterprise. Build and runtime. Runtime through Kubernetes, you know. Uh, Google Run is getting a lot of traction. Yep, yeah. A lot of these new uh, pieces we are looking at, like BigQuery, Canvas, for instance, uh, for like natural language, it's all running. Uh, okay, so as a research yeah. analyst, you do a lot of events. Let's just zoom out. For yeah. the folks watching who mm -hmm. didn't attend the one, maybe they kind of checked out the Twitter stream, mm -hmm. they see all the sizzle. Where's the steak of this, on this show? What's the, where's the beef on this show? What's the, what, how would you assess the show? Give us a quick rundown of yeah. what you think, what the big points were, and right. what it means for customers looking at their cloud business transformation with AI. So uh, this is the biggest Google Cloud Next I've ever been to. Actually, it's twice the size of Moscone Center by just moving here. Uh, and the number of analysts who were in my two days of analyst summit, 120 from 38 different companies. So we, so I see this new level of confidence in Google. They, they think, their moment in the sun has arrived <laughs> and they think they made the right bets. All these years you've had like people come on the show and say, well I don't know about Google Cloud. They're not really enterprise friendly. Yeah, you know, they go to markets week, they don't have an ecosystem. Correct. They not really have, they're not bringing their tech <clears throat> to the table. I mean I've been very critical of Google in, yeah. in a very positive way like, yeah. and I remember saying years ago, if they brought that tech to the table right. and cleaned up their motions with customers right. and yeah. built an ecosystem, right. they'd be great. Now this is pre-Gen AI. Yeah. Now, Guess, guess what, they get a lucky strike. Right. Gen AI comes yeah. and they got a user interface with Workspace. Yeah. They have big iron right. back-end scale, yeah. just add GPUs yeah. and TPUs, yeah. and then they've been working on Kubernetes for yeah. 10 years. Yep, so Kubernetes is a big thing. Uh, all the infrastructure that they've laid out, undersea, under submarine cables and yeah. uh, data centers, that's world class because YouTube, Surge, ads, they all run on that at planet scale. So no, no question about the hardware. Security, this is a week we are hearing about what happened to Azure. Do you know yeah. how many security incidents uh, Google has reported? Zero. Yeah. They had one little incident in public sector, it was, it was or no, with Google's, but it was, it was kind of weird on the side, it, but it was a nation state attack, so it was definitely yeah. different. But I, I would agree with you, I, and, I, and I, Dave and I called this on theCUBE years ago, and we said Apple and Google yeah. have the best security right. on the planet because they have a consumer business. Right. Google had security advancements at the biometric level with Android hardware level. If you look at Apple, same thing. Now, the big thing that happened at World War Congress this year, as we get into the supercomputing AI infrastructure is, it's devices into the cloud. Hmm. So, IOT or handhelds, handheld devices. So, your end-to-end -end themes is coming up too. So to me, I would, I want to ask you this because the theme that's jumping out of the cube is a continuation of the same theme of, End-to-end -end workloads can be an advantage to scope those out now, lock them in and scale them up. Yeah. That has come Correct. big, so from device in, so you need the full stack to manage that in Correct. for AI. So to your point about full stack, yeah. I'm a company. Correct, yeah. I don't have to redo my entire IT, I can take one workflow right. that has an app at the end point that users Correct. use, Correct. That, and that whole workload can be optimized. Right. That's a huge theme here, workload optimization, yeah. end to end. You, you, they're using AI uh, both inside and outside, inside being workload optimization. FinOps has been a very big topic. I don't know if you've had anyone talk about FinOps on nope, your not show? Yet, not here, not today. So there's a entire FinOps uh, division. They have launched uh, a bunch of new features for FinOps, a new single pane of glass. So, so there's a lot of uh, movement going on. I, so John, I really feel, personally, that the keynote did uh, more on agents than 
uh, it did so much on agents that all this other amazing stuff got hidden. Yeah, well they had too much announcement. Like, like always, they were trying to check the box. Like AWS event, there's so many announcements. Yes. I mean, right. I heard from the, yeah. the, the whispers in the hallway, there was over 600 announcements that had to be pared down to 200. Yeah. They just couldn't get the volume out. Correct. So there's a lot in, more. In eight months, 600 new innovations in yeah. eight months. So right. I give Google yeah. really high marks on this event. One, big event. Yeah. They pulled the content together. Again, all this work they're doing in eight months and overlay that on the industry change. Correct. That's been significant. So right. it's been a moving train on, on the rapid change in the industry combined with getting this word out, so they, they built on Model Garden, they got Model Builder and, and right. then Agent Builder. So right. they, got the, they got now 130 miles in Vertex, Gemini 1.5, I've been playing with it. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's got cross-modality cross analysis and reasoning. That to me is a yeah. huge deal, and I think that's going to be the secret gem that pops out of the show. So we saw Gemini at work yesterday at the developer keynote. Uh, during the developer keynote, uh, towards the end, they took all the video and they sent it through. <laughs> so that was 627,000 tokens. So out of a million, they used 627, but it just literally took a couple yeah. of minutes yeah. and they were asking questions. I mean, it, it takes a lot of guts. Okay, final question yeah. to wrap up here. First yeah. of all, thank you for your time, I know you're busy. You're What's your advice to customers that you recommend, you, you pu pull the data in from the show, you're going to probably do a big report, yeah. you're going to synthesize it, reason all the Correct. data. Correct. What's, what's going to be your kind of, what's your early, Directional, directional position on for the posture for customers when they look at Google Next as a viable cloud. Yeah. How should? How are you thinking about? So I, I, that? I think all these years that we've uh, been questioning viability of Google Cloud are now behind us. I think this is a first year. I think we are now going to see an acceleration. So I would say uh, we are already hearing how 90% uh, of the startup unicorns already use Google Cloud. I think Google Cloud for even for enterprise is now a very viable option. Yeah. I would totally agree with you. I'd, I'd add one more thing to that analysis, at least from my perspective is the, the, the doubts, doubters can, now that's all gone, yeah. Google's viable. Ecosystem has been really performing well. They're standing tall with their booths. Correct. They're paying up for the sponsorship. They're having parties. If Google can maintain this year and make the ecosystem successful right. and not overdrive that piece, then it's the last piece of the puzzle. They got to get the ecosystem 100% on board. Yep. No cognitive dissonance. Correct. Because yep. right now, I'm sensing like, uh, we, did I buy the right car? You know, like, I love yeah. this car. Correct. It's almost yeah. too good. Yes. So everyone yeah. has those kinds of doubts. Yeah. So Google should have to reinforce, no, we are here for you. Go to market, right. support them, drive business through them. That will be key. And again, public sector, a whole nother great position that they got. So love the public sector. And I think the ecosystem is the last piece of the puzzle. Yeah. And of course, I'm a big fan of what BigQuery is. I think that's the unsung hero because that's the engine. Hmm. The cross-modality reasoning will be the big piece of the puzzle that will make everything work. And of course, the glue up top is the orchestration with Kubernetes containers and serverless. And, and, then and the, by the way, one really critical piece, uh, when I was on KubeCon uh, three weeks ago in Paris uh, on the Cube, uh, we were talking about the metadata layer. Everything that goes into Google also goes into yeah. Dataplex, which is yeah. the, the uh, and it gets uh, tagged and classified, and you can apply security on this role-based access uh, control and attribute-based access control. That metadata layer is that secret sauce to how this whole thing works. So, so, great to have you on on the cube. Where can people get a hold of you? So the best way is through LinkedIn. So you know, please feel free, follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, also my Medium blogs and my YouTube podcast. All right, so. Sanjeev Mohan, Cube contributor, uh, industry analyst. This is the space, your wheelhouse, data <laughs> and cloud. This yeah. is the Cube bringing it to analyst angles. Day three of our coverage, we'll be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>